Okay, so we're down now on the P4. This is the lowest level. You know you're on the lowest level because we're standing on top of the sump pumps. There's the sump controls. I know I'm at the bottom. That's how I know I'm at the bottom of the condo. Yeah, believe me. So if you notice, this is slightly different than what we saw on the other floors. The reason is this is half the size because, and this is the point that I was trying to make about the distance. In the middle of this level, there's a whole group of lockers that took up this whole middle space. So it made, if I was to put the panel here, trying to get to the way to the other side of the lockers all around and around, I would have more than exceeded my 300 foot limit. So what we did was we put instead two smaller panels on this level, smaller transformers, smaller panels. There's one here, and I, we'll see if we have a minute, we'll go take a quick shot. There's one that just looks just like this right on the other side and sometimes in condos people are more they're not used to making the transition from a single family home or whatever to a condo and they're used to doing things the way they want to do them but in a condo it's a it's just a, a shared facility it's it's a, an environment we have to learn to live with others and what we want is always not always the same if it was me and i was an ev owner in a condo i would like you to put uh, the $800 charger that I bought on eBay in my space or, or my really amazing high power wall connector at the same price from uh, Tesla in my space, tie it into one of the panels nearby that's already existing and put a meter in there that the property manager will read. I would be very pleased if you would do that. That might cost me uh, two or $3,000 and it would be very economical. But you're telling me that that's not, that's not the game plan. You want something different. You get into what kind of vehicle you have. Well, I have maybe a vehicle that has a smaller battery. I just want an outlet. I don't even need a charger. I just want an outlet, an extension cord, and I don't even want a meter because there's no sub-metering perhaps in the building. And I could bring in a TV or any kind of appliance in my building or in my suite, not have to pay extra for it. So I don't even want to pay for, for the meter. So things have come a long way. And now we recommend for sure from a load balancing perspective, a pricing perspective, security perspective that you touched on with the, the card uh, to go with a network system and away from those level one, uh, just uh, electrical cords being plugged into sockets. If those kinds of things are in those policies and it's up front, it's communicated, you can have a debate at that time, but usually I'll say calmer heads prevail. And once you read the policy in its entirety, each one of those statements are, are pretty hard to argue. You know what, this, just to be clear, if you plug the car into a 120 volt receptacle and it's charging at a quarter of the speed, it's still charging the battery exactly the same way. It's just taking longer, but the same amount. It's not the equivalent of, of a TV set. It doesn't work that way. And, uh, you know, it, I think it does have to be treated a little bit differently. And the other thing is that sometimes we get into this, um, I'll, you know what, I'll just pay $50 a month. And, and you agree, the board agrees, and I agree, so where's the problem? And it may not be a problem for a short period of time. Uh, it doesn't deal with the power sharing, but it might deal with the billing piece of it. The problem is that you and I have been around long enough. Residents change, boards change, property management companies change, and what's gonna happen is guaranteed three or four years from now, somebody's gonna be sitting at a board table and there's gonna be an argument about I'm getting ripped off at $50, or the corporation's getting ripped off at $50. And this will be an endless circular conversation that will go at every board meeting until we put a meter in. So let's just put the meter in to begin with. Agreed. Sometimes the policy is written and the people believe it's for the EV owners. It, it's for everyone. So as they're communicating to the prospective EV owners as to how they're going to be dealt with from the corporation in a fair way, it's also communication to all the rest of the people that may be looking at EVs, may not have an EV, may not ever want to get an EV, but they need to know, oh, yes, we now can see that they're going to be paying for their own electricity. I'm not subsidizing that. It really makes it easier for everyone. And we're adding value, right? It, it's, when I go to sell my unit that I don't have an EV, I do have an EV, right? So it's a, if I don't have an EV, how about that? But if I don't have an EV, maybe the person coming to buy my unit does. And the fact that they can be accommodated uh, at One Bedford or, or any other building, that's, that's the advantage. That's the piece, that the amenity piece that we were talking about. So it's adding value for everybody, whether they ha even have a car or, or not. You know what, I just want to thank you so much for both you and, and David, who's here, for taking time to, uh, to, to let us have access here and to speak with us and to be kind of leaders in, in 
moving this ahead. So this is the other panel on that I was talking to you on the P4 level. So we come way kitty corner all the way around. If you see what's happened here, there's a, just a little bit of dead space that we found that it's not interfering with this driver and it's protected nicely by this this post. So it worked out nicely. The ESA had no no concern about this. We even mounted the transformer. This transformer could have gone on the floor. But if we mount it up a little higher, then when they're power washed on the floor, we don't have to worry about the transformer. If you've got somebody with an expertise in this looking at this for you, you'll get the right solution. It will be done the right way the first time. So thanks for taking some time to learn a little bit about electric vehicles and condominiums. If you need more information, you're looking for uh, uh, load evaluations. Uh, you, you need us to come to your building to see what's uh, what's needed. Maybe you've got a group of managers that you want us to speak to. We'd be happy to help with all of these things. We've got the expertise. We're here in the uh, Greater Toronto area. It's Signature Electric. You can reach us by phone if you like, 416-490-8093 or pop into the website, see this video, other videos. It's uh, signatureelectric.ca. Thanks again.